the last video talked to us about how to calculate the or probabilities. Uh, the and probabilities are a little trickier. So in order to do an and probability, we have this general multiplication rule. Uh, in order to find A and B, we're going to multiply the probability of A given B, remember that conditional probability, times the probability of event B. So we think back to like the problems that we saw before. Oh goodness, that's yellow. We think back to the problems we saw before with the males and the very happy from the first day. We looked at, oh I don't even remember what we looked at. We looked at male and very happy, right? It was one of the first probability we found. And we also had our given probability. Now our given probability is set up differently than the one here, but I'm gonna take a moment and erase all of this work that we did in class and think about that formula from the last page. You guys don't have to flip back. I just want to kind of bring that up. So the formula that we just saw said the probability of A and B is the same thing as the probability of A given B times the probability of B. That is one way to calculate this out. So if we were to think about this one, we already know the answer to M and very happy, male and very happy. And now we're thinking about um, multiplying these other ones. So male given very happy is actually the opposite of the one that we found before. So I'm not liking my setup here, but we're going to do it anyways. So if we know somebody is very happy, we know we're in this category, right? Given very happy. Now the probability that they're male, that is our 221 all out of that 370. And wait, in order to be there, we needed to first have a very happy person, right? So what's the probability that somebody is very happy? Well, we could also figure that out. The probability of very happy, well, that's these 370 people out of all 603. So those would cancel, leaving us with just this 221 over 603. That is how this AND probability works. It's almost easier, I think, to think of in the other direction. We started with, okay, what's the probability someone's very happy? Now that we know they're very happy, we know that because it's on the other side of the line in our conditional, what's the probability they're male? If I multiply those together, I'm going to get back out our AND probability. So moving back here, uh, I sort of tried to illustrate what this is. So let's see this question um, in action. And this particular question is one that I've actually put on exams in the past or very similar questions if not this one is pretty much on every exam. So I'm going to give you guys a moment. Um, I want you to do what we did in the question that we saw in 4.2 with the cats. So we have three different probabilities here and then we have a probability that we're looking for. So I want you to go through and figure out what the heck these probabilities should be in terms of their probability notation because this is the crucial step to plugging into this formula properly. If you don't do this step you or you don't do this step properly you will get everything wrong. So we have these three probabilities 60%, 78%, 65% and we have the one we're looking for. I want you to pause the video right now decide what they are. We should be coming back now. We had two events that were of interest. Adopting dogs and dogs being mutts. So the simplest thing to do is to go through the question and everywhere you see adopted or mutt, you just underline those words, adopted and mutt. And now we look at each probability. So the first one, 60%, nothing here about a dog being a mutt, only talks about a dog being adopted. So this is the probability of adopted by itself. It's one of our marginal probabilities. The next sentence, has our 78%, it has adopted, it has mutt. Notice that there is no and or or between these. This is the heads up that this is a conditional probability. One of these pieces must be what we know. And if you look down at this next little bullet point here, when you're looking for those conditional probabilities, your keywords are given of or if. So if we look through this sentence, we can see the keyword of of. That's telling us we know the dog was adopted. There's a 78% chance it's a mutt. So adopted is going to go behind the line. Mutt is going to go in front of it. The last probability that is given to us is a 65% mutts. Nothing here about the dog being adopted or not, so we have another marginal probability. 
And then we need the probability that we're looking for, which is adopted sweet keyword of and mutt. So adopted and mutt. So again, this is a good heads up that we're going to be using this and formula. Right? So first thing we're going to do in that two steps of the translation is that we're going to go through and translate our and formula so that every, well, A is already an A and every B is rewritten as an M. So we need the probability of A given M times the probability of M. Unfortunately, though, if we tried to use this, what you're going to find out is that we don't, we have the probability of M, but we do not have this probability here. This one here is M given A, not A given M. So it almost makes more sense in this particular type of question, instead of using the order to determine what's going on, we know that A and B is the same as B and A. The order of the and doesn't matter. What really matters here is that whatever is behind the line in our conditional is what we're going to be multiplying by. Because if we already know the dog has been, in this case, adopted, we need to know, well, what's the probability it was adopted in the first place? So if we go ahead and do this, we should use the given conditional, M given A, and then we're going to multiply by what we're supposed to multiply by. The, whatever's in the given section is what we need to multiply by, so it needs to be A. So this probability is just 0.78 times our probability of A, 0 0.60, and I need a calculator. This is 0.468, so there's our probability. So that's how we find our AND probabilities. We need to have, for those, especially those dependent events where one influences the other, in this case a dog is probably more likely to be a mutt if they were adopted, we need to make sure that we have this multiplication rule in effect. So we talked a little bit about this conditional probability, those keywords of given, of, or if. I want you guys to sort of work through like I do every question, underline your events, look for your keywords and circle them. That way we're never getting these uh, probabilities translated incorrectly. Whenever we have dependent events, we can find this probability, this, which is going to be given to you on the test, on that formula sheet, along with the AND and OR rules. Um, it's just the probability of AND uh, over whatever we know. And this is actually what we were doing or what we saw in action on that first conditional, uh, that first contingency table with our first conditional. Don't divide by all of the people that we're talking to, only a divide by the males or only divide by the very happy people. So we can also do this in a probability setting as well. So just to give us an example from that previous question, again, I'm going to go back up. You don't have to go back in your notes, just, just follow along here on the video. So earlier in this video, I went ahead and did the AND formula using this conditional probability of the very happy people. Uh, the, of the 370 very happy people, 221 of them were male. So that's our probability of being male, given that you're very happy. Uh, this used just the straight up numbers, but we could have used that probability rule as well. So that probability rule told us that we were looking for M and very happy all over the probability of very happy people. So had we used probabilities instead of using the numbers, we would have ended up the exact same spot. So the probability of being male and very happy well, that's exactly what we did in the joint one. So that's 221 divided by this 603. And the probability of very happy, well, that's exactly what we have here in our marginal. This is 370 all over 603. Those 603s will cancel, leaving you with your 221. Oh, I wrote 222. It's a moment of crazy. Uh, all over 370, exactly what we did with the numbers. So you don't have to use probabilities, you can go straight to the numbers of people in both of these events as well. So we saw a little bit of how the formula worked. Uh, by the way, that formula is also just a rewrite of this formula. All they've done is solve it through for that conditional. So if you wanted to solve it, you would just divide by the probability of B on both sides and get that formula. Um, we used to not even give that formula out at SDSU because you could just plug into the other one and solve. Um, most notable thing, the ands, right? We talked about the probability of A and B is the same thing as the probability of B and A, and same thing with the ors. 
doesn't matter what direction they're in, but that is not true at all when we do our conditionals. Probability of B given A and the probability of A given B, they have different denominators, different things that we would divide by. So it is incredibly important you get the direction of your conditional correct that you read for that of if or given. The last piece of this independent piece, uh, thing is what happens with multiplication. Uh, when we have independent events, what happens to this rule? So if our events are independent, one does not influence the other, then that tells me, remember, that the probability of pizza, given that someone is male, does not influence anything. It's just the same as the probability of pizza, right? 90% of people like pizza, male, female, it's 90%. So we can simplify our rule from up above I don't have it, I don't want to go up there, but that we can simplify that rule and just multiply the two probabilities together. This is only allowed when we have independent events. Students try to use this all the time. They're always like, oh, I'm looking for an and, I just multiply. And that is not the case. So 100% make sure that I've told you they're independent or that you know for a fact there's no relationship between the two events before you use this rule. Again, I will not give this to you on the test. And my stuff, you can write it on your formula or on your note card, but you better not use it when you're not supposed to. So let's see this rule in action. So our first question here, we have 20% of students take SAT 119 at SDSU. 40% uh, graduate in four years. That's a real number. Um, their graduation rates are not terrible. Uh, just with the courses being so impacted, most students will take over four years to get through all their classes. Um, if these events are independent, what is the probability a randomly selected SDSU student is blah, 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 blah. All right. So if we go through this bit by bit, which is what I recommend, we see we have one percentage given, two percentages given. We have been we're looking for another probability, and we have been told this very sweet and very important thing that our two events were independent. As soon as I see this, I write down that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. You finally get to use the sweet multiplication rule that you've always wanted to use. So write it down. You get to use it now. Our two events in this particular question are about taking STAT 119, which is the equivalent course over at SDSU, and graduating in four years. So we got, okay, STAT 119, graduate in four years, and a keyword here of or between those. So if we were to translate everything we we're given, we were given that 20% have take, had take STAT 119, we were given that 40% graduate in four years, and we are looking for the probability that they take SAT 119 or will graduate in four years. So this is what we want. Now here's where the wheels fall off a bit and where students can get confused. In fact, I'll give you a moment to pause right now and try to see if you can find this probability. So hopefully you paused and you tried it out, and here's where students get hung up especially if they wrote this down, they wrote down the independent rule. We know that the probability of S and G is just 0.2 times 0.4. The probability of S times the probability of G. Because they're independent, we get to use this sweet rule. So there's a 0.08% chance, right? Or 0 0.08 uh, probability or 8% chance that they've taken SAT 119 and will graduate in four years. Now, that's not what we're looking for. That's the most common mistake on this particular question, which another one, which is another question I've put on a lot of tests over the years. We want the or. So the probability of S or G, well, we have a sweet or formula, right? The or formula was probability of S plus the probability of G minus the probability of S and G, right? Each of the things added together, subtracting off the intersection we counted twice. This is why that and was important, right? We now can use that and in our formula. We have everything we need to find our or. So this should just be 0.52. Boom. And again, remember, or should be slightly larger than either of the uh, individual probabilities by themselves. And and should always be smaller than either of the individual probabilities by themselves, thinking about that Venn diagram. So how else is this used in the tests and in this class? Uh, I will make you identify if events are independent or disjoint. 
uh, based on sort of common sense. And I will have you test if events are independent or disjoint based on probabilities. So if you need to test based on probabilities, that means I don't want your opinion. I don't want you to tell me that there is no relationship. I want you to do one of these two things. Either use the and formula. If it is true, then that means that they are independent. If it is not true, it means they are dependent or not independent. Um, or you can use the conditional probability. And if it's the same as the marginal probability, then it is independent. So that's the way to test using probabilities. Uh, the next two questions have us do this using just common sense, which is the very first question I believe on your homework. Sort of a common sense, are these things independent or disjoint? And that's it. So here we go. Events here are Democrat and Republican. First question is, are these events disjoint? Disjoint, remember, means that they are mutually exclusive. That they cannot occur at the same time. That the probability of A and B is equal to zero. All of these are the same. So can somebody be a Democrat and a Republican? Can a randomly selected person be both? The answer is no. So these events are disjoint. And here we're really talking about Republican and Democrat in terms of their registration, not in terms of like, oh, particular beliefs. Because you could say, maybe I'm, you know, socially democratic, but fiscally Republican. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying registered. Um, next question is, are they independent? So I want you to take a moment and decide whether you think these two events are independent or not. Is there a relationship? Your answer should be no. Here we're saying that the probability of A, here I won't even, I'll change it from A, to the probability that somebody is a Democrat, given that they're a Republican, well, what's the probability that if I know somebody's a Republican, what's the probability they're a Democrat? It's zero. It is not the probability that they're, ooh, that's terrible, the probability that they're a Democrat, right? So these two things are dependent. Knowing the outcome of one, if somebody is not a Republican, that gives me a larger probability that they're a Democrat. If you say it's a 50-50 split, my original probability, assuming that they're a Democrat, is, ooh, is 50%. And that probability would be much higher if I knew that they weren't a Republican because now there aren't as many options available to them. So you got one last question and then we are done with this particular piece. Uh, again, disjoint and independent. Take a moment, pause it if you want. Try out this one on your own. If you're coming back, we were looking at a first, we have two dice. We have a first die showing a three and a second die showing a four. Um, these events are not disjoint. It is possible if you roll two dice for one to come up three and the other to come up four, right? They have, should not, that's a possibility. Um, are they independent? Yes. The outcome of one die does not influence the outcome of another die. So this is the sort of opposite of what we've seen before. In fact, what we can actually say is it's never possible to be disjoint and independent. Those two um, events themselves are disjoint. They cannot occur at the same time. So that uh, finishes up 4.3 and we will jump into 4.4 which is when we learn all about our displays next.